Hello, Gay Henrix. Hello there, Lilo. Oh, it's so good to be with you. I am so excited to start this Big Lip series with you and share this with everyone watching so everybody can benefit from this. This is big. This is big. This is a big leap you're about to take. <laughs> And I'm thrilled because I did a video earlier to invite everybody to read the book, you know, to start and really be part of those sessions as much as this, this was their own session. Yes. There is a benefit from everybody. Um, and your goal is to really help people to unlock their potential and that we fully explore that and, and remove those barriers. So I invite everybody to, you know, all of us to take our life to the new level as I'm, as I'm taking my life to a new level. Let's uh, let's let the ripple spread out to many, many, many millions of people who see this eventually that can apply it to their own lives. This is very, very exciting. So we're going to do about four or five sessions, and um, this is the first one. So I, where do we start from, Gay? All right. Well, let's start just like you were in my office here. One of the first things I'd ask you to do is just uh, get comfortable, and um, are you uh, comfortably uh, where you can uh, be seated for the next half hour or 45 minutes? Yeah. And uh, are you likely to have any distractions, anything that will get in the way of us uh, going deep? No, that's good. Yeah, I'm okay. fully 100% here. Okay, great. Uh, is there anything from your perspective that you really want to work on or any particular content area that is something uh, that you'd like to focus on particularly? Everything, I'm just really noticing in my life how I sabotage things. You know, as soon as they get good, um, I have this way of limiting, whether it's love, whether it's money, anything really good. So I guess it's affecting all areas, and this is really a perfect conversation to, you know, to have. There's no, no specific, because I really am clear that this shows up everywhere in my life. Mm, that's a good way to look at it, because it usually does, yeah. Um, okay, great. Well, let's, um, let's then begin with uh, what I call some wonder questions. Um, a wonder question is key to my work, to learn how to ask questions in a genuine state of wonder. Uh, you know, a lot of the times, a lot of the questions people ask are questions that aren't really questions. You know, like, like if your mother says to you when you're little, do you have to keep playing that game or do you have to keep making that noise that's not really a question you know that's a statement disguised as a question so a lot of us lose the art of asking wonder questions but a wonder question is a question that means a lot to your heart means a lot to your spirit means a lot to your whole life and you don't know the answer to it you genuinely don't know but you're willing to wonder about it okay uh so um if you, um, if you read through the book, um, you'll see that there are wonder questions all through the book. But let me start with one of the first ones that I really asked myself when I first started this inquiry 35 years ago. I realized, as you do, that I kept sabotaging myself. So, especially in the area of contentment, just like contentment in relationships, things would go well for a few days or sometimes a few hours, not even a few days, and then I would do something to mess it up. And so my first wonder question was, hmm, how can I extend the periods of contentment in my life? Hmm, it was kind of a, it was a new way I, I learned to ask questions where I was opening up to the full creative ability of the universe to step into it with me and kind of you know, it's like I'm not pretending I know anymore, you know. I want to just wonder about it. So let's turn what you said earlier about those upper limits into a, a wonder question. Like, hmm, how can I... So go ahead and play with that a little bit. Give me a few examples of what you come up with. How can I what? How can I... How can I expand my ability to feel good all the time? Or how can I live in love so that I don't ever mess it up. Um, wow, that's a big exercise right there, straight in. <laughs> how can I how can I welcome love to come in my life more and experience more of that every day? Okay, just take a moment and let's what I call fluff it. Fluff it with a few breaths. Okay. 
give it some breathing room, let it kind of float in there, and feel actually genuine wonder about it. And I often invite people to make the sound, hmm, 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 you know, like you're really wondering, like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I like that. Hmm. Yeah, so there is some scientific evidence, interestingly enough, that when you hum, hmm, it unifies the two hemispheres of the brain. And uh, I didn't know that when I first started having people, hmm, but it was great to see science kind of prove that that's a useful thing to do. Mm, I like mm. that. So put a hmm in front of that question and ask it again, the, the question so you just... Can I, I wonder how I can bring more love in my life and... And, and start it with a hmm. 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 I hmm. wonder how I can bring more love in my life. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Just kind of hum it to life in yourself. Um, I find that the best tr forms of transformation come more easily when you're playing with things rather than working on them. You know, sometimes people can work on a problem for 10 years and it doesn't ever get solved, but 10 seconds of, hmm, playing with it can make a huge difference. So in the spirit of that, let me ask you another question that I asked myself early on. Yeah. If I can eliminate the behaviors that stop the flow of positive energy in me, can I learn how to feel great all the time? Hmm. Let's try that on. Hmm. Can I learn how to feel great all the time? Hmm. hmm. Can I learn how to feel great all the time? Hmm. I wonder if I can learn how to feel great all the time. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Would that be a possibility for you? Would you be willing to feel great all the time? I'll be willing to step in that, yes. I have actually, my body is just like, there's many things happening in it as I'm just considering that question and wondering. Good. Tell me about all those things. Tell the audience about uh, what some of those things are that you're feeling. It's, it's bubbling up. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's like parts of me becoming alive. You know, I can, I can just, parts of me... You know, I wonder if I can just be with that all the time, though. <laughs> yeah, it, it may even it feel is, scary. I don't know what to do with myself when I found myself in this place. Mm -hmm. So you've had some negative experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So take a moment and say, that was then, that was this then. is now. Mm -hmm. That was then. This, that was then, this is now. Yeah, that was then. This is and now. At, that's, this is now. And ask yourself, in this moment... Am I willing to feel great all the time? Yes. I'm yeah, willing like, to feel like great all the time. I'm willing to feel great all the time. Just let it live in you as a possibility and fluff it a little bit. Hmm. Wow. Here's something. There's discomfort that is interesting. Yeah. Well, it brings up stuff. And, you, and here's the thing. These questions ought to bring up things that you can feel in your body right the moment you ask them. If it doesn't, if you don't feel something in your body, keep asking the question until you actually get a release of something in your body. It, 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 it nearly feels like I'm going to, I want to cry. You know, it's nearly, it, it's like, uh, it's like this moment where I'm holding back from crying. It feels like I should be, like, you know, would crying would help or would like be a new, you know, uh, uh, like breaking through, expressing that joy. Like it's like, like it's like it's hard to be with that joy, and then I suppress it instead of going fully into it. Yes. Well, for for the benefit of yourself and the people who will watch this, ultimately, it's a good thing to just let those things come on through. So any feelings you feel, like fear or sadness or anger or joy, just what I call fluff them. Take a few breaths into them like you're fluffing a pillow, you know? Because <laughs> sometimes tears are about sadness and sometimes tears are about joy. But they're just more stuff that needs to come through. Mm. Yeah. So good. Just give yourself a good fluff. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
I use my breathing a lot and I encourage people to use the natural resources of their breathing when they're working because a lot of times when people get stuck, it's because they stop breathing, they hold their breathing. Um, one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Fritz Perls, he said, fear is only excitement without the breath. So in other words, when you're scared, it's because you've forgotten to breathe. Mm. But if you can just learn to breathe with that very thing, same thing, it turns into excitement. It's kind of an amazing insight. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you another question or two here. And these are all wonder questions. So make sure you start them with a hmm, mm. kind of a sincere moment of wonder. Can I allow things to go well in my life all the time? Hmm. hmm. Can I allow? I wonder if I can allow all those wonderful things to be present in my life all the time. Yeah, so fluff that a little bit hmm. with your breathing. Hmm. hmm. In my relationships, can I live in harmony and intimacy all the time? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> I wonder if I can live in harmony and uh, intimacy. In intimacy, wow. All the time. All the time. All the time. Hmm. 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 So, so these are kind of the questions that I started wondering about and asking myself. And um, have you ever read the um, any of the poet Rainer Maria Rilke? No, I have not. Uh, he's a wonderful German poet from the last century, and um, he has a little book that's called Letters to a Young Poet, where a young poet wrote him and asked him some questions, and then he responded to those. And one of the things he tells this young poet, he says, don't be in a rush to find out the answers to questions. What you should do is ask big enough questions that only can be answered by changing your life. And then one day you wake up and you realize that your whole life has answered that question. Wow. That yeah. And so if you ask these big questions, they're not questions that your mind can answer. They're questions that can only be answered by your life. Mm. I've never considered that, you know, this is such an interesting viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing to realize. So we want to ask those kind of big questions here. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the way you're really getting into the spirit of, of asking them. Now, I also asked a question that I realized that not only human beings have this upper limit problem. In other words, we have this tendency to sabotage ourselves when things are going well. But also countries have it, you know, and the whole world has these upper limit problems where there'll be peace for 20 or 30 years and then all of a sudden everybody's got to go to war, you know, wow. and then... And then that'll die off for 40 or 50 years, and then it happens all over again. And sometimes it's already happened two or three times in my lifetime. You know, I was born at the end of the Second World War when everybody was recuperating from that. And then we had the Korean War when I was a little boy, and then the Vietnam War when I was a teenager, and then the Gulf War back in 1990, and then the second one. You know, so it's at this stage of the game, we've got to realize that our whole species has an upper limit problem. And so what I want people to realize is that every time you lift the lid off one of your upper limits, you're doing it for humanity as a whole so that we can get over this habit we've got of shutting ourselves th down when things are going real well. Mm. So the way I asked that question was, I love that. Can our species live in expanding waves of peace and prosperity free from the pattern of messing things up when they're going well? So wherever I have this conversation, Lilu, I want to make sure you and your um, viewers know that this is in the context of the whole world we're healing here. I want everything we do to make a difference in the larger world. Mm -hmm. And I firmly believe that if we can get enough of us 
transcending our own upper limits as individuals and in our relationships, then pretty soon the whole world is going to wake up to that idea. Mm, I love that. I wonder if the world can be with that, all that love and joy. And That's what we're here to find out. Mm. That's what I want my life to be about, is helping make that happen. Because I know when I'm on my deathbed here, in the, whenever that is, whether it's five years from now or five minutes from now or 15 or 20 years from now, I want to know that I've done everything possible I could with my creativity and gone as far as I could with everything I had to give. Um, I've had the experience of being around a number of people as they were making their death transition. And, you know, everybody's asking big questions at that point. You know, they're asking, why didn't I ever tell Sam I loved him? Or, you know, those kinds of things. They're not ever saying things like, oh boy, I wish I'd bought that new car in 1993 that I wanted. You know, it, it's, it's always things of the heart. And so that's why I like to ask these big questions. Wow, and you express that so well. I feel it in my whole body when you share that. There's so much realness and so much heart. Yes. So one, one point I want to make for everybody and yourself in this first session, yep. just like you were sitting here in my office with me, I, I want to say that willingness and commitment are the keys to everything that we do in these conversations. Like you've already opened up to a number of willingnesses, and that tells me a lot about who you are as a human being, that you would say, yes, I'm willing to feel great all the time. Well, that's maybe, I've never thought of that before, and it brings up stuff, but yes, I'm willing to do that. So I appreciate that about you. Willingness and commitment are the keys because you have to open your heart with willingness, but then commitment helps you set forth in the right direction. So That's I find. It's a big word for me, commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. Why is that such a big word for you? Commitment feels like there is some uh, feeling of being stuck or of not having any more freedom and not being myself anymore. Well, that's a club I belong to also because that was my big issue before I got into my relationship with Katie. Uh, my wife, Kathleen, um, goes by the name of Katie around the house, so you may hear me refer to her as Katie in addition to Kathleen. Um, Kathleen is the name that's on the front of all of our books, but Katie and they're here in the house. Um, when I first got together with Katie, I had my individuality really well fortified. You know, it was like, don't fence me in. I'm not going to make any commitments. I don't do this whole, you know, unity <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's just hilarious because I can say, if I can become a successful person in relationship, anybody can. In fact, um, I wrote an essay when I was a, um, a 10th grader in high school, and it's called why I know for sure that I will never, ever get married. Wow. And I said that in this essay, I wrote that everybody in my family who's married appears to be brain dead and sleepwalking. And they all seem like they're living in, in prison. They all seem like they're prisoners. And so I don't want to do anything to limit my freedom. So that was my whole position. And then I realized when I was in my early 30s, when I was just beginning to get into my relationship with Katie, that that was the whole problem for me, that I, out of my own fear, I kept myself from making a full-scale commitment to any relationship, and that it was based on this fear that if I made a full-scale commitment, what if the person would leave me? Yeah. And so it was all based on this fear of abandonment. Mm -hmm. So in that spirit, what do you think yours is based on? Uh, the, the fear of not growing um, together, whether, I mean, I'm talking here team or in a relation, any type of relationship, right? Work and romantic, is it both? Yes, both, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the, the feeling of not, um, of being locked in and not uh, growing uh, together, not able to communicate, uh, not 
growing apart. Yes. So the, the fear is more based on if I really committed, that might mean that I would lose my freedom and my creative ability and my ability to grow. And, and it sounds very much like that ability to grow is sacred to you. Yeah, and I want to I want to be with around people and find people and meet people that want to grow at that same intensity and uh, speed. Absolutely, and I think that's what you should open your heart to. And what I'm wondering in this moment is, would you make a commitment now to attracting that kind of relationship into your life that would best meet you on that level? I would love that, yeah. I'm yes. committed to attracting that type okay, of people good. and relationships, whether it's work or love or friendship. Okay, good. And so take a moment to get the joy of that. It almost looks like it brings up some sadness for you when you say that. I see your eyes moisten. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome that too. Open your heart to whatever comes, sadness or joy or whatever. So let's just take a moment and celebrate that commitment. I commit to attracting a kind of a relationship where we share that joy of learning, where we share that joy of growing. That's what you really want. Yeah. So yeah. I commit to attracting a relationship with and people with that level of growing and that commitment of growing. Yes. It scares me too. I mean, part of me then, it, it brings up fear as to, oh my God, then who am I going to have to be around then? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a very good point because I want to bring that up because when you start opening up to your big leap, you'll usually find a part of yourself that you need to learn how to love in you. Because if you... If there's a part of you that you haven't learned to love in you, you'll attract a partner that shines a flashlight on that area, and sometimes not very gently yeah. on that area, and that's what causes a lot of relationship blow-ups and breakups. So let's just take a breath to that old, unlovable part of Lilu. <sighs> just kind of take a breath in that direction, kind of fluff it with your breathing, just like you'd fluff a pillow and kind of... Love it up a little bit. Hmm. I commit to learning to love the unlovable things in myself. I commit to learning to love the unlovable. Commit to love the unlovable. Mm. So right now, just find some place in yourself that feels unlovable and send a breath of love to it. Put a little drop of love on it. Bing. Mm, like just a little homeopathic drop of love. <laughs> I do that a thousand times a day, still to this day. You know, it's one of the great discoveries of my life that any time that I'm not feeling absolutely wonderful, it's because there's something I haven't loved in myself. And as soon as I love whatever that is, ah, the flow of wonderfulness goes again. It's, it's difficult when <clears throat> I've, I've bandaged my life to always move forward being hard on myself yeah so um, that's what move has moved me forward being hard on myself and on others yes and so maybe now you've learned that style really well now it's time to learn yeah a whole other style and so just love that part of you that has to do everything by pushing people away Hmm. It needs a drop of love. <laughs> Give it a drop of love. Just a little homeopathic drop to get it started.
So how are you feeling now as we uh, proceed along with this? Um, are you feeling good in your body? I feel, I feel there's been a, a few sensations bubbling up. And right now, yeah, I feel uh, it's going towards my head right now. But yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm being present. So mm. I'm being present, but at the same time, I have some uncomfortableness in my facial expression or, you know, still holding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not being the not being fully at ease with it. Mm-hmm. Yes, and with myself in that yes. intimate moment. Good. So just letting the flow of breathing go through that too. Just include that in the bigness of your breath. Hmm. Human beings go through waves of accepting ourselves and then shutting down to ourselves. Accepting ourselves. Ah, So let's just celebrate both sides of that. That's the beautiful thing about love, that it's big enough to embrace the unlovable. Love is the only thing that can contain its opposite. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful, I think. I feel I'm not deserving of all this love. No matter how much I do, I really, I give, give, put out, and I never feel deserving enough, feel like a fraud and just not, and I'll be found out. Yeah, and where do you think you picked up that idea? Was that from somebody else, or was that from somebody else's life, or was that from something you learned in this life? Um, I want to say from, from childhood, or... Uh huh. So that was no matter some- how much I would do, you know, I would I would feel not uh, validated or is never good enough from my mother. So you lived in an environment where people were stingy with approval. Well, I had a lot of freedom. I had a lot of freedom, but at the same time, I th- maybe it's related to the French culture. Because I, you see, I grew up partly in the U.S. but partly in France, and I and I found myself and reading part of the first chapters of the book. There's this memory of being so open and so out there after we lived in the U.S. for I lived we lived there in Scottsdale between when I was six years old for two years, and then I came into the French culture, and in the U.S. it had opened me so much up that then. You know, people told me when I, when I got in France, you know, tone it down, you know, uh, uh, who do you think you are? Uh, you, you think, you know, you're it. And, and there was so much that then just all of a sudden, like I had to fit in the mold. So I was at a place of total expansion and all of a sudden it's like, poof, no, 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 you can't, you can't be who you are. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. And so that was a place of real shutting down for you. That must have been quite confusing for you to yeah. have to change the whole way of being. Yeah. yeah. I was so expanded and then boom and I feel like each time I expand and I fully shine out everything that I have within me, you know, it, 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 people around feel bad and or, or it has a negative effect on people, you know, and that's not what I want. I feel I have so much energy and so much love to give but each time I start to, you know, shine that out, it has, I, I feel I can do it through the camera. That's why I feel safe to do it through the videos I do. But as soon as I do it in real life or in person, it's, you know, and then you have the whole demand of other people asking, you know, from you things. And then it's just like, there's this, ah, this is like his uh, uncomfortableness, uh, and then I separate and isolate myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's take a moment to just appreciate that insight that you've identified one place where you maybe took on a pattern of open, shut, open, have people feel bad, shut down. So, so take a moment and just really get clear that that was then, this is now. Yeah. That was then. That was then. This is now. This is now, yeah. Now, in this moment, 
right now where you are, are you willing to expand and have people love it and be happy? I'm willing to expand and have people love it and be happy. I'm, I'm willing to expand and be happy and have people be happy and love it. Yeah, yeah. When I expand, people get happy. <gasps> when I expand, people get happy. When I expand, people get happy. When I expand, people get happy. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the new way we want to make up reality now. Wow. You see, that has a particular vibration to it for me, which is pretty deep because of the fact that I'm six foot tall and and I have, you know, I'm big. Like I have, you know, a big sat statuous <coughs> body. And in France, it's very big. And so to expand, you know, just to think of expanding in all ways is like, whoa. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people being happy for, about that, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Spread your wings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just take a moment and savor this idea that I'm willing to be as big as I am. I love that. I'm willing to be as big as I am. I'm willing to be as big as I am. Yeah. I'm as big as my am, I am and people are happy. I'm as big as I am and people are happy. <laughs> yeah. See, that's an even better story than when I expand, it makes people unhappy. Yeah, so this is a much higher quality story. Yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those big Rainer Maria Rilke questions. You know, you want to make ask a question that's so big that only your life can answer it. You're like, how big and happy and successful can I get? <laughs> I love it. How big and happy and successful can I get? How big and happy and successful can I get? Mm. Mm. Let me just take a moment and wonder here from my perspective, how big and happy and successful can Lilo get? Mm. Mm. The only thing that comes up for me is infinite, infinitely. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I so get that. I'm in good. pure joy right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, good. Well, that's the um, that's where I like to end sessions. I don't. Uh, sometimes I I have to work with a person for three hours before I can get them there. But I don't want to ever stop when I'm uh, uh, before they feel that. So um, we'll kind of wind things uh, down here and uh, just take a take a few breaths to kind of fluff that joy a little bit. <sighs> Wow, I love this place. Mm hmm. Well, that's the big leap place. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. <laughs> <laughs> What's that French saying they used to have? Zutalor. What does that mean, anyway? Uh, it's a rude word, but it means. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> um, Zutalor is like, damn it. Oh, <laughs> well, I always, I always heard it said in a positive way, though, like, Zutalor. Zutalor is like, ah, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, good. Well, good. Well, may you have much joy until the next time we... Um, Thank you. So what is, what is the assignment between now and next session for me and for everybody watching? Because I, I know you told me to read the first and second chapter for this one. Good. Here's my suggestion is to go back through this uh, recording that we just made and every time you come to a wonder question, write it down and stop and try it out right there on the spot, okay? Write it down and try it out because by the end of this, I want you to have a kind of a page full of wonder questions that all you need to do is look at one of those and you pop free into joy. Mm. Cool.
So every time you find one in this recording, write it down and then just try it on. Say it a few times in your mind. Say it a few times out loud. Mm, I love that. Thank you. That is so great.